Welcome to the Bake Like a Pro YouTube channel. In today's recipe, I'm going to show you how to make a very easy red velvet cake. So, let's get started. Into a large bowl, I'm going to get one egg. I am using a large egg. To that, I'm going to add three quarters of a cup of vegetable oil. Then our next ingredient, three quarters of a cup of granulated sugar. I'm going to grab my hand mixer and I'm just going to start mixing all of this together. This is a really, really simple recipe. Let's get my mixer going. I want to get a little bit of air incorporated into all of our ingredients. Slow my mixer down. I'm going to add our little bit of vanilla. This is half a teaspoon. And then I have a half a teaspoon of white vinegar. I'll add that in as well. That's going to add some acidity to our recipe. It's going to make the cake tender as well as our buttermilk, which I'm going to add in in a couple of seconds. Okay, that's good. And then I'm going to add in one tablespoon of red food coloring. And I am using a gel. You can use a liquid if you wish. So that's one tablespoon, which is equal to 15 milliliters. Get that all in. Okay, that's good. Grab my mixer again. I just want to get this all nicely combined. We're going to need a half a cup of buttermilk. And I'm going to add about half of that in. Just get all of that mixed in. So that's a half a cup of buttermilk, which is equal to 125 milliliters. That's good. And then I'm going to start sifting in our dry ingredients. I'm going to be using one and a quarter cups of all-purpose flour. To that, I'm going to add in a half a teaspoon of baking soda. And then to that, I'm going to be adding in a half a teaspoon of cocoa powder. I'm going to grab all this, and I do want to sift this. So I'll sift that. Gonna push that through. Grab my mixer. Speed number one. I do not want to overwork my batter at this point. So once that flour goes in, I really don't want to overmix this. And if you have a stand mixer, like a KitchenAid mixer, you'll want to use your paddle attachment. It's a really good way to go. And then the rest of our buttermilk. And there's a lot of acid in buttermilk, and this is what makes this cake so tender. Just get all of that mixed in. And then we'll sift in the rest of our dry ingredients. Let's get all of that together. Right in there. Just push the rest of it through. And that's it. Grab my mixer one more time. Speed number one. And I just want to slowly get all of this mixed together. So you just want to mix it until it's combined. So get your mixer up on the side of your bowl so you can get it in. Get all of that in. And if you're afraid of overworking a batter, you can always turn your mixer off and just do this. Just do it by hand. And this works really well also. So you can just go like that. Just 
So make sure that everything is well combined. And I think that looks good. So I'm just going to clean off my mixer here. Just clean off the beaters. That's good. And now we are ready to fill our pan. What I have here is a 9 inch in diameter by 2 inch high baking pan. I've lined this with parchment paper and in some countries parchment paper is called baking paper. And I do have my oven set to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. We're going to get all of our batter right in. And whenever you're getting your batter into your baking tin or pan, make sure that you do use a spatula. So you want to get everything out of your bowl. That's good. And just take my spatula. Just get it all nice and even. Okay. And now I'm going to pop my cake into my 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. I'll bake it off and I'll come back and I'll tell you exactly how long I baked it. So here we are again, right out of the oven. I baked this for exactly 30 minutes in my 350 degree Fahrenheit oven. At this moment, this is extremely hot, so I want to let this cool for about 20 minutes. Then I'm going to take a little spatula, just go around the side, and I'll lift my cake out. So I'll do that and then I'll come back a little while later. So this is about 20 minutes later and it's still pretty warm but I do want to get it out of the pan before it completely cools. And you always want to do that because if you don't you can get a soggy cake. So heat that is trying to come out and around the sides it doesn't come out and then it stays on the side of the cake and then you can get a, a wet cake. So I just want to go around make sure it's there I can see it's nicely broken now. And then I can just take my hand and pull it off and you can see there 9 by 2 inches that we used. You can see the magic of this, this parchment paper and then I can just remove this. And there we have it. Now I'm going to let this completely cool and then I'll come back. So this is a few hours later, my cake has completely cooled and now I just want to cut off the top to level it out. I'm not going to take too much off. So I'm looking at my knife and I'm trying to equal out the spacing on both sides. And I am using a serrated knife so you can see how nicely that cuts. It's more like a saw rather than a knife. So you can get right in there and I'm just going to lift that off. And I'll flip it over and I'm just going to show you how nice and red that cake is. Look at that. Really nice. At this point, we have two different options. We can cut right through the middle, flip it over, frost the inside, place it back on the top, and then frost it like that. But I'm going to do something a little different today, which is becoming very popular in pastry shops. I'm going to grab my knife, and I want to make sure I get a nice right down the middle and this is a great idea if you want to have a cake that's higher but you don't want to have a lot of cake if there's only a few of you in the family who are going to eat it and you don't want to make a huge cake this is a really fun way to go now we have our two sections and look at that oh and this is super super moist so I'm going to place that over here. What I have here is a cream cheese frosting. If you want to see me making this recipe, I'll put a link to it in the description box below this video. I have just made this. I'm just going to whip it up a little bit. This is what I'm going to be using today. That's good. I've got a piping bag here with a Wilton 1A tip. I'm just going to fill that and I'll be back in a second. And then I'm just going to grab my frosting and I just want to go around. I think that's good. 
just going to grab a little offset spatula and just get that on there and you can see that really nice contrast between the red velvet and our cream cheese frosting that looks nice and then I'm going to grab the top and I'm going to flip it over because I do want the top to look nice and I'm just going to place that very carefully that looks good and I just want to push it down a little bit just to even it out that looks nice I'm just going to move it over clean up my edges Now we can frost the top. Now this recipe is a little bit thicker than the one that I used in my carrot cake video. But it still needs to be chilled if you want it a little bit more firm. So at this point, I'm just going to pop this into my fridge for a little while, maybe about half an hour. I just want this to set up a little bit, just so that I can finish off the cake a little bit nicer. So this is about 45 minutes later. I just wanted to make sure that our icing was set up enough, and you can see that it is now. If we leave this out for a half an hour or so, it's going to get a little bit less firm, but I like it like that. I was going to frost the front of our cake. But I started looking at it and I kind of like the look of it. It has a nice little rustic look. So for this video, I'm just going to leave it like that. If you're going to take it to a party, you're going to frost all of the front so that it's completely frosted in. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take a little slice here. And I'll show you the clean side. So we'll just get right in here. And bring over my plate. And get that on there. Look at that. Oh, that looks really good. Let's turn this around. So let me just zoom in a little bit. So now that I've zoomed in, hopefully you can see how nice the cake is. And this is a very tender cake. And the addition of that cream cheese frosting really makes a nice combination. Of course, I'm gonna have to try a little bit. And even though this cake is chilly because it's been in the fridge you can see how easily I just broke into that very very nice and of course I'm gonna have to try a piece mm. wow that is really really good that is so good I'm going in for a little bit more mm. the cake is super moist and the icing is not overly sweet, so it's a really, really perfect combination. So hopefully in today's video, I made this simple enough that you'll want to try it at home. One thing that you're probably going to be able to do better than I did is get a more even coating of the cream cheese frosting in the middle. I always find that I'm, when I'm doing a video, I kind of, I'm a little bit more rushed. I feel a little bit more nervous than if I'm just doing it when the camera is not going. And I always make a better cake when the camera's not on. But that's how it goes. So I hope you try out my recipe. It's really, really easy. A really good cake. You're gonna really love it. If you enjoyed my video, please give me a thumbs up. Subscribe if you wish. I really do appreciate that. If you're on Facebook, you can check me out. Facebook.com slash bake like a pro. What I will do is I'm gonna take a lot more pictures of my cake closer up so you can see it much better. I'll put those on Facebook and also on Pinterest, pinterest.com slash bake like a pro. I'll also have them over on my Instagram page, instagram.com slash bake like a pro. 
And of course, I'm also on Twitter, twitter.com slash bake like a pro. So that's it for today, and I'll see you next time. This is really good. Mmm. That's really good. That just melts in your mouth.